Hello friends, welcome back to Longevity Now, Longevity Now FL. Uh, I'm uh, Luigi Fontana, uh, professor of medicine and the scientific director of Charles Perkins Center RPA Clinic. Today we're going to discuss a very interesting paper just published in Science on the long-term impact of consuming sugar, yes, sugar and sugary foods, during the first 1,000 days from conception on the risk of developing diabetes and hypertension. Very, very interesting data. As you know, as we already discussed in other videos, both under and over nutrition during pregnancy and the first uh, years of life have a huge impact in uh, increasing the risk of developing obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and many other chronic diseases, including cancer. Uh, however, assessing the long-term impact of one of a specific food consumed early in life during the first 1,000 days from conception is challenging, is very challenging. Uh, yet, <laughs> a compelling study from post-war UK sugar major limitations provides very interesting data. Probably nobody, not everybody knows that during the decade leading up to 1953, sugar was strictly limited to under 40 grams, under 40 grams, grams per day for adults with none, none allowed for children under two. Then when the, uh, this limitation ended in September 1954, sugar and sweet consumption nearly doubled almost immediately. <laughs> Researchers in this study, publishing science, as I said, found that adults conceived in the first 1,000 days prior to this date had a 35%, 35, 35 lower diabetes risk and 20% lower hypertension risk compared to those conceived between July 1954 to March 1956. Very, very interesting. So a 35% lower risk of diabetes and a 20% lower risk of hypertension just by restricting uh, sugar because of this po post-war uh, UK sugar rationing uh, has this dramatic effect later in life. Additionally, these studies show that the onset of these diseases, diabetes and hypertension, was delayed by approximately four years for diabetes and two years for hypertension with risk reductions increasing with the duration of sugar restriction. The most significant protective effects were observed in individuals exposed to limited sugar intake both in utero and postnatally, particularly after six months when solid foods are introduced. Indeed, in utero, sugar restriction accounted for nearly 30% of the risk reduction, highlighting the profound impact of early dietary patterns on lifelong health. In, in, in stark contrast to today's uh, dietary patterns, you know, we know that today's infants and toddlers are frequently exposed to excessive sugar through maternal diets, infant formulas, and solid foods, with pregnant and lactating women often consuming over three times, yes, three times the recommended daily limit of more than 80, more than 80 grams of added sugar. Okay, so basically these people are consumed in, in, in US and many other Western countries, people are over consuming sugar and sugary foods uh, well above what is recommended to me 
added sugar should be completely eliminated from food, from, 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 from your diet. So these are very, very interesting data, uh, <laughs> expanding you know, what we know about the influence of food intake, of specific food intake in the early, uh, early uh, phases of life, and uh, but you know as we will discuss in other videos and i already discussed in, <coughs> in previous videos beyond diet uh, we know that maternal sleep quality uh, and exercise also affects offspring health and new development uh, for instance there is a study showing that poor maternal sleep and sleep disorder breathing during pregnancy have been linked to increased infant adiposity, bad mood and temperament, frequent night awakings and snoring, highlighting the, the broader scope of lifestyle factors that shape early life health trajectories. Okay, this is just food for thought. Um, we're going to continue with other videos, you know, to provide scientific evidence supporting uh, optimal health and the shift from treating chronic disease to promoting chronic health that is as you know is my mantra and uh, should be also your mantra and if you're interested in this concept in this scientific concept not the the fed uh, ideas and diets and uh, whatever exercise and other uh, biohacking <laughs> interventions proposed by snake oil sellers um, uh, uh, you 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 might you may follow my 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 channel uh, as i try to provide the most uh, 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 advanced and uh, rigorous uh, scientific evidence that is available in the scientific world Thank you for listening. As always, this is uh, Longevity Now, Longevity Now FL. Uh, I'm uh, Luigi Fontana, professor, uh, uh, physician, uh, and uh, the director of the Charles Perkins Center RPA Clinic and, the, and of the Health for Life uh, uh, longe Healthy Longevity Program at the University of Sydney and a clinical academic in the Department of Endocrinology of the Royal Prince Alfred Hospital in Sydney, Australia.